This is the Calgary Royals Hockey Podcast. Brought to you by Rigstar Communications, innovative oil field communication solutions. Video production by the Creative Monkeys. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first edition of the Calgary Royals podcast for the 2006-2007 AJHL season. My name is Liam Nixon, and I'm joined tonight by uh, Curtis Walty. Curtis, nice to be joined by you by the, for the first it's, podcast of the year. Yeah, it's going to be a terrific season. I hope everything's going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. It definitely. is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, tonight's first game uh, of the podcast features the hometown Calgary Royals going up against the Drumheller Dragons. Now, the Dragons came into the season, Curtis, very high expectations after a good year for them last year it's only their fourth year in the league they had high hopes but uh, it hasn't quite started off how they were envisioning it well definitely they are off to a one and six start it's definitely not what the team is was envisioning coming into this season but they uh, on the 26th on Tuesday they got the first win against the Calgary Canucks and coach Rod Hadberg did say that he was very pleased with the effort and they were very exceptional in the way that they stuck to their game plan and I think coming in tonight against the Royals, I think they're really uh, coming in with some high expectations, and the Royals should really watch out for that. They're good, ready to come to play tonight. Right now, Tuesday night, we were here for the game, and uh, the Royals' best line by far was the, the line of Chartrand, Pollard, and Korolek. A uh, bit of a coaching change, bit of a lineup change uh, with that line tonight, though, Curtis. Yes, absolutely. But the the two there, the Pollard and uh, Chartrand, are still in that lineup. I think Falk is a, a little bit of shorter in stature, like, the less of those two and I think he'll really compliment well and uh, the reason that line worked so well Liam is because they have four checked hard they were hitting everywhere on the ice the neutral zone in their zone even hitting in their in the defensive zone that's and that's the key to tonight the Royals have to hit a lot more I think it didn't work out last game but the Shark China and really established that and I think that's going to be the key tonight all right, well, you heard it here. The key to tonight is to see if that lineup for the Royals, again, that of Chartrand, Pollard, and Falk will be able to lay the body on the Dragons players, maybe slow them down a little bit. We'll have to wait and see if that happens tonight. And I'm here with Ryan Corey. Uh, thank you for joining us. No um, obviously, it was a t it was a tough loss tonight. Yeah. But um, what when uh, they came in tonight, Drumheller? Did you guys feel a little bit, you know, tired from the last game? Didn't have the same jump, or what did you feel about? Well, it I definitely think our team's been tired. Like we had a talk in the dressing room. We've had four uh, four games in the last six days. So obviously, that's going to take a toll on the players. But primarily, I think we came in, and because. They haven't won very many games. They're the last place team in the league. I think we were really lackadaisical coming onto the ice. We thought we could just go out there, steamroll over the team, and they obviously had a jump. They're a desperate club, and they wanted to win, and it showed tonight, and we took a night off, and it cost us another easy two points. So. Yeah, and even when they had their uh, uh, legato in that tonight, did yeah. that even get make it a little, take them even more lightly, or what do you think? Well... I don't know about lightly, but like it was definitely noticed on the bench. Guys were talking, and they even got their back up in, like, "Come on, let's get lots of shots and stuff." And you know, like I had a pretty shaky one at the start, so we wanted more shots, more shots, and we still ended up with 33 shots. But I got to give him credit, like even though he's a backup and he's had some weak games, like I think he made quite a few good saves tonight. So you got to give him credit for that. We just didn't really capitalize on a lot of our good chances. And finally, you guys have to play the uh, Brooks Bandits again. Yeah. Um, what is your approach going into that game again, having another rematch with the same with the Bandits? Uh, I definitely think we're going to be more prepared for that game. We got two days off here: practice Sunday, practice Monday, and then game Tuesday. So we got a couple games to regroup, rest sores, and then hopefully get back in it. Like they're a team we have to catch. We know we need to beat them, and I think. Royals can easily be top three team in this league. Like we've played Okotoks, we've played top teams in Grand, like in Grand Prairie and mm -hmm. in the North and such. And you know, we we just gotta get a handle, start getting the winning attitude. And I think we'll come out and you'll see a much stronger team against Brooks. Well, thank you very much, Ryan, for this and. Uh, 
good luck next game. No, thank you. Thank you very much. We are here with the player of the game for the Calgary Royals tonight, forward Shane Lust. Now, Shane, a tough defeat at home tonight um, against Drum Heller. Seemed like they really came out in the second period and took the play to you guys. What was the difference between the first and second period that allowed the Dragons to come out and take the play to you guys? Uh, I think we weren't prepared in the dressing room today. Um, we let uh, two goals in the first minute of the first two periods, and that uh, really sets you back to start the period. So. Right now, now the goaltender they had tonight, Stephen Legato, making his first um, appearance of the season for Drumheller. He looked like he was saving almost everything that came at him. Talk about him. Was it was it st starting to get into your guys' minds a little bit? The saves he was making. Did you guys try and make some adjustments to maybe get some more traffic in front of him? Yeah, the goal was to get lots of shots on the guy. It was his first game, but then again, he's trying to prove to his team that he wants to play well and be a be a goalie in this league too, right? So uh, all credit to him. He played a great game for them. All right, so looking forward to your guys' next game. What do you think are the key things that you guys are going to have to improve on for you guys to come out and uh, win your next game? Uh, we got to have two hard practices here before uh, we see the Bandits again, and they're going to be wanting to get us back from last Tuesday. So uh, we got to be prepared again and uh, too loosey-goosey in the dressing room this uh, game. I thought uh, everyone thought they're last place team and took them a little lightly tonight. All right, well, Shane, thanks for this, and uh, congratulations on the player game. Best of luck in your next game. So Curtis, Shane lost there um, a bright spot on an otherwise not so bright night for the Calgary Royals. Um, it just seemed like the team couldn't really gel together tonight, didn't really look like they had their legs at all tonight, and uh, never really got any sort of sustained pressure or momentum. And I definitely think it was more because they had to play four games on six nights, and it, it definitely, you could see it out there. They just didn't have the same jump, they didn't have the same physicality that they had last game, and it, de it definitely showed out there tonight, and uh, I think that they have to, uh, yeah, it definitely didn't happen tonight for them. Okay, and, and it seems like any time they did get any sort of momentum, there was a goaltender by the name of Steven Legato that was standing in the way. He might as well have built a brick wall in his net and taken the period off in the second. He was amazing. Well, for a guy that's starting his first game, I mean, there's, I mean, the coaches are just, you know, just do your best. Don't worry about it. Just have a good game out there. And Steven Legato did more than what probably coaches asked for. He was just terrific tonight. He made 31 saves. It was an absolute great game. And uh, for a guy that's not very big, I mean, he had a terrific butterfly style going on tonight. Good rebound control and saw everything tonight. Even even the tough ones, he, he was excellent tonight. Now, if you're the drum heller coach, do you maybe have it in the back of your mind that you may want to take another look at Steven Legato in the next game based on what he did here tonight? Well, I think Coach Hedberg will definitely look at that. For a guy that's, you know, not a very big guy. And LaRose is also you know, he's with a 4.13 goals against Savage. He's definitely a little worried now that a guy like Legato could take his spot. All right, so based on the play that we saw from the Royals tonight, what things are they going to have to change going into their next game to try and get back into the win column? Well, Liam, we, we talked about tonight when we, we didn't see, and even in the Bandits game as well, we didn't see the same physical hockey that from a line like Chartrand's line. They they showed that same physical presence. Tonight, they didn't, they were, they were almost invisible tonight. We didn't, did, we, did we even talk about them? We didn't, obviously. And uh, I think when they go against the Bandits next game, they have to be physical. They got to get in the face of the players. They got to jam the net and They'll, they'll be successful the way if they do that. All right, so we'll look for Coach Ryan Barrett to implore his boys to get back onto the body in their next game. Now uh, it's time to throw to the highlights. We'll take a look at some of the hits, some of the penalties, and, of course, some of the goals that came out of this game. And at the blue line, the shot. That won't get through for Tom Heller. Oh, and they score on the rebound. Number 17, Kyle Kowalski, the right place at the right time. Kind of a funny hop in front of the net there, Curtis, and Kowalski was able to jump on the rebound. Well, talk about starting a game the way you, they need to do it, and that get the first goal, and they beat the Canucks this way with a heavy pressure, and they're doing it already tonight, and Olnick, he's off to a tough start already. And now it's back to the point for Corey of the Royals. Corey leaves his defensive position, goes in deep. Oja back to cover, Corey comes in, scores! What a play by Corey, comes in from the blue line, draws two Dragons players to him, he's able to cut out front and tuck it under Steven Legato. It was definitely a bit of a, a, a bit of an angle shot there, but it seemed to just squeak right through on the through the pads of Legato there. Definitely good shot, good opportunity, just keep shooting like I said, and they're gonna go in for you. And now they are gonna break out, they being the Dragons, Versig oh. shoots from the blue line and he scores a weak goal given up there by the goalie for the Royals, Brad Olenek. Versteeg, the big defenseman, not known for his goal scoring, comes across the blue line. Olenek wasn't screened or anything, just a well-placed shot, but one that Olenek should have had. Olenek, there's no way that should go in. This is a type of sh shot that a junior A goaltender should have. 
and that, there's just no excuse for that. It's, no, it's cycled by the Royals, and that's in front. That goes to Lust, and Lust is able to sneak it in behind the goaltender, Steven Legato. Nice play by Lust there. A little bit of a delay move. Looked like he was going to go to the backhand. Sold the goalie on that. Pulled it back to his forehand. Oh, it's just a terrific play, and... Uh, yeah, that definitely making that one fake to the right and going back to the left threw off Legato and does a beautiful open net. Picks it up now and he plays it back to defenseman Lewis for the Dragons who plays it back over to Young. Young back to Lewis. Lewis, a wrist shot. That gets tipped in front by Anneliger and a goal. That was a beautiful play a, by right. number 10, Derek Lewis. Winded up for the shot. Saw Anneliger in front. Did a little bit of a shot pass. Anneliger, stick on the ice, change the direction. 3-2 for the visitors. And that definitely shows Lewis has terrific vision. He doesn't just shoot it. He takes a nice look, and he sees Annalee right in front of the net for the perfect tip. And really, for any goaltender, it's no chance. That, that nope. is just a beautiful play. Taken away by Davenport. Davenport has a little something started here. He comes across the line. He has Lust trailing the play. Oh! oh and that is going to be a penalty <laughs> on Verstig oh. for Jamella. That's going to be a tripping call. As Davenport came into the zone, Verstig went low on him, and that is what we call a submarine hit. Yeah. As Davenport saw the ice, the ceiling, and then the ice again went head over heels. We wait for moments like this yes. for television viewers. Now Cameron crosses the zone for the Dragons, looking for some help. His line mates were on a change. Now it's Matlow. Matlow feeds it out front. Here's Cameron. Cameron can't find it. Now he does, and he scores. He's able to lift that one up. Looked like he wasn't going to find it, but that second effort again, backhanded it right up and over Olenek's shoulder. Drum Heller takes a 4-2 lead. He plays it out to Chisholm. Chisholm comes out. He crosses center, takes the shot, and oh, that is off the, the goal post post is still his of best the net. Yeah, the goalie's not even there, and he's kissing the goal post. Uh, that will run out the clock as the... Drum Heller Dragons come into Father David Bauer Arena two nights after winning their first game against the Calgary Canucks. They come in against the Calgary Royals, and uh, I'm pretty sure Drum Heller won't be uh, will be willing to get back to Calgary as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. They definitely uh, did a nice sweep job here in the city of Calgary. And that will just about do it for this edition of the Calgary Royals Hockey Podcast. On behalf of Curtis Walty, I'm Liam Nixon. Thank you very, very much for tuning into this podcast. Be sure to join us for the Royals' next home game. That will be against the Brooks Bandits coming up this Tuesday. Puck drops at 7 o'clock October the 3rd. We want to thank you again for tuning in. And uh, come down to the rink next time, Father David Bauer. Come down, support the Royals. They'd be happy to see you. We'll see you next time. This is the Calgary Royals Hockey Podcast. Brought to you by Rigstar Communications, innovative oil field communication solutions. Video production by The Creative Monkeys.